Hey guys, Gary J here, and today we're looking at a special muzzle loading black powder rifle. This is a very unique uh, design muzzle loader here. And uh, this particular uh, muzzle loader came out, uh, I think it was in the, in the early 90s, and uh, it was designed for a specific purpose, and that was long range black powder shooting, long range black powder shooting. And it goes back to the Creedmoor match and this one is inscribed Creedmoor match, but this is a reproduction of some of the others. And I think it's a little bit smaller scale than the original Creedmoor match type rifles, but it's a very unique rifle. And when you get these uh, long distance rifles like this, it comes with a certificate of authenticity it's being one of the special made Creedmoor Match long distance type uh, muzzle loaders. And you get this information here on the Creedmoor Match and all the specs on this particular rifle. And uh, that's my micrometer there that, uh, for measuring and special bullet mode just for these particular bullets uh, because you can't find a 500 grain, 410,000 diameter bullet, so you have to make your own. And uh, the black blue steel item there is your bullet sizer and also bullet starter for the end of your barrel. And that's the, your bullet right here, which is a huge, long 500 grain bullet for the 45 caliber. This is the case that it came in. And these are pretty rare to find today. Uh, it has a 32 inch uh, round bull type barrel we might would call it today and a walnut stock with a tang sight on it and uh, these were pretty special right here when you found uh, one of these type of long distance uh, shooters uh, most time people think 100 yard 200 yards is is about average for a black powder muzzle loader and when i say muzzle loader you're loading the power the powder at the end of the barrel and putting a conical in this case uh, into the barrel so this particular gun and these Creedmoor matches were designed to shoot uh, up to a thousand yards now when you think of a thousand yards you know that's a little over half a mile so it's interesting if you uh, study the origin of the Creedmoor match to give you a little history of Creedmoor Match and this long distance muzzle loading shooting out to a thousand yards. Uh, one of the first competitions that you read about will be the Irish versus the American rifle team. The Irish versus the American rifle team. The famous Creedmoor Match in 1874 between the Americans and the Irish national team came about as a result of a letter that was sent to New York Herald and published. And this was on November the 22nd, 1873. So this goes back again, November the 22nd, 1873. So it's way back there. A lot can be said too for the snipers of the Civil War. Now they could reach out there and touch you at four and five and 600 yards. A good sniper could. And, uh, so this is 1873, we have this challenge to the Riflemen of America from the Riflemen of Ireland. So two teams competed and it consisted of six shooters on each team. The U.S. team used a combination of breech loading Remington rolling blocks and Sharps rifles. The Irish team used the Rigby muzzle loading rifles and this was built on the Rigby muzzle loading rifle the one you see before you so the reason that uh sometimes you see people laying in a prone position on the ground you could do that in the creedmoor match and they use like a cross stick uh to support the gun and you couldn't have any other support you could shoot any way you wanted to as long as it wasn't supported by anything truly solid other than the kind of the x type of uh uh, rest for your barrel. So um, another thing too is the first Creedmoor match was won by the American team on the very last shot of the match. The very last shot. 
The score with one shot remaining was the Irish team who had 931 points and the American team with 930. A fellow by the name of John Bodine, also known to many as Old Reliable, was a 48-year-old former colonel in the New York militia. When his time came to shoot, he calmly walked to the firing line at 1,000 yards, again, over a half a mile, got into his shooting position, which, oddly enough, was a face downward posture, but not using any type of cross sticks for support of the barrel, took aim and fired. His shot struck the black bullseye of the target for a score of four, giving the American team the victory and the final score of 934. Now imagine this guy shooting a muzzle loader uh, rifle and he's hitting the bullseye at a thousand yards. That's uh, pretty incredible. It also gives you some idea of the accuracy of the long-range rifles here, even the muzzle loaders. So that was really impressive. And uh, another, another situation, we had uh, one of the best shots of the Irish team was by a 24-year-old wool merchant by the name of J.K. Milner. He scored a bullseye four on his first shot at 900 yards only to discover that he had uh, fired on the wrong target. His shot was called a miss. The miss cost the Irish team the match. And there are many other stories you could go uh, on about, about the long distance muzzle loaders. Now this one is scaled down a little bit smaller than the original uh, muzzle loaders of that particular time. And this would be a smaller caliber type of muzzle loader. So uh, this is a 45. But don't let the 45 fool you because this one takes a very special uh, bullet, conical bullet. And that bullet is a 500 grain bullet. Who ever heard of a 45 being 500 grains? But that's what you shoot in this pistol, I mean this rifle right here, 500 grain. Now, I could not find any 500 grain 45 caliber uh, bullets, conicals, for a black powder gun. So I had to order a Lee die that would uh, produce those kinds of bullets. And uh, it would be 410 thousandths of an inch diameter on these bullets. And again, 500 grain. And that would be what you'd be shooting in these Believe it or not, a lot of times on the shorter distance, uh, we call it anything less than a thousand would be shorter, right? Uh, you'd be using like 70 grains, and on the longer distance, 110, 120 grains of very fine, good powder uh, on these particular rifles here. Again, these are reproductions here. Uh, they're very hard to find. Now, these, this was built... Uh, for Navy arms, for Navy arms. So uh, they use a lot of great ideas from great gunsmiths in order to create this particular one here. And uh, when you think about long range shooting, you may think of some of the great gunsmiths like Whitworth and Henry and Rigby and Metford and Gibb and Turner and Kerr and Ingram and Jacob. All of these gunsmiths are very well known uh, back in the 90s. I doubt it today, but marksmen and collectors have always admired the historical muzzle-loading arms. These gunsmiths were genuine craftsmen and manufacturers of small bore rifles, which this would be probably considered small bore, being a 45. Though they initially remained within the orthodox military style, to rifles later went through the long process of developing that led to even more refined rifles. And so, what we have is the evolution. Uh, the small bore, small bore match rifle series, and that's kind of what you're looking at right here. It was set forth by the Sports Committee of the National Rifle Association of Great Britain. Now, with that kind of competition and this particular type of design, there are certain specifications that you have to have on these kind of rifles. 
One, it had to have a minimum bore, a diameter of 440 thousandths, and a maximum bore of 460 thousandths. The twist had to be 18 inches up to 30 inches on the twist of it, the rifle twist. The maximum weight, 10 pounds. Had to have this half stock uh, with a pistolet handle, a round barrel, which you got a round barrel here. Uh, total maximum length had to be like 36 inches. Now this barrel here is like 32 inches. A precision tang and fully adjustable windage. So on this particular uh, muzzle loader here, long distance, the caliber is 451 thousandths of an inch. The weight, 8.8 .8 pounds. Overall length is 49. Barrel length, again, is 32 inches. As uh, The barrel is a round conical, eight grooves of 0.3 millimeters. One turn in 25 inches. One turn in 25 inches. And it's a right-hand twist. And that's important when you get in precision shooting to know how many grooves and, and what kind of twist you have. And the sights are precision tang. And the front side on this is fully adjustable for windage. And um, the percussion muzzle loaded with a patented hook, breech, half stock, selected walnut, hand checkered, oil finish, heavy duty, quadrangular, copper, barreling, nipple. And uh, they have a bullet starter nipple, nipple key, a turn screw, a square nipple. And uh, you have a bullet sizer too with this. So the bullet sizer uh, is used to make sure that uh, the diameter is precision on these bullets. Now, a little bit closer at this particular rifle. Now looking at the stock right here, pretty wood right here, and you got your tang right here. This is just a quick look at the tang sight right here. Uh, on this bar right here, you have calibrations. Uh, maybe you can see that. And down here on your aperture part, you have an arrow right here. And you can adjust this to 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 yards, all the way to 1,000 yards. And uh, in order to move your, uh, when you pull this back, there's a screw right here. You turn that screw, this locks this tang side in place. You can't have that moving one way or the other. So you want to lock that in place when you get ready to shoot. And if you want to move this up and down, you turn this screw up here and this screw right here. Well, you turn this right here, that loosens it. And then you turn this right here, up and down, uh, depending on whether you want your aperture to go up or down. And once you're there, you, you lock it in place. Now, if you're shooting a particular load, like 70 grains of powder or 100 grains of powder in this 500 grain bullet, and once you, you're hitting your target where you want to, notice where this little arrow is right here and the increment level so that you can reset it, write that down. Write down your load, your bullet weight, and uh, what what uh, distance you're shooting at and what uh, line this is on right here on these increments right here. So uh, do that for 100 yards, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 900 yards to 1,000. So you got to keep a record of all that stuff, otherwise you have to do it all over again. So. This is the beauty of the uh, Tang uh, rear sights. And it's kind of a case hardened uh, design here. And you may be able to read that Creedmoor match right there. Cause a little difference in your shooting. So this is really a pretty incredible rifle here.
Now look at this barrel. This is a heavy barrel. And you get an idea of how thick this barrel is right here. But look at the sight right here. And you see you got micrometer adjustments there on the sight. So you can adjust it here. You can adjust it here on your sights so shooting right or left. And uh, of course you got the tang too. And right here you see Navy Arms Company. Hartfield, and then there's some writing here, and there, this other side here, and this is enter Marco here. So this is, uh, I know I'm getting out of view here, but this is just a, a very unique design. And, you know, we, where people don't know black powder guns, uh, you got a lip right here. There's a lip comes up right here. And uh, and inside here, you got this rectangle hole. You just put that lip in here like this right here let the barrel set down here and you squeeze the barrel in the 4M stop 4M stop right here push in this pin right here all the way through and now your barrel is locked okay you get a little idea how this looks uh, and it's really a beautiful uh, muzzle loader and um, it shoots really great I mean because you got the tang sight in the rear and you got adjustable front sight on it and um, so it's just really a a neat type of muzzle loader and I mean you hit anything with a 500 grain bullet uh, that'll stop just about anything Okay, we want to look at the uh, bullet here and get that to focus. This is 500 grain bullet. This is a monster bullet right here. And uh, this is what you put in this long range shooter 500 grain 45. Whoever heard of that? Now, uh, I couldn't find the 500 grain specifically on the 410 thousandths bullet. So I had to order the uh, Lee die, I think it was Lee die, to make my own bullets, conical bullets for this particular rifle. And uh, so they turn out pretty good, grease them down. And... Uh, Again, this thing is just huge. Imagine 500 grain and trying to find something like that. So uh, once you've made your bullets and all, you use a bullet sizer because it, it has to be that 410,000. You're shooting precision with black powder with this now. And here's something you don't see very often. Um, and this right here, uh, you take your bullet and stick in here. And you take this plunger right here, and you push the bullet all the way through the other side. And uh, in doing that, it sizes the bullet so that it's exactly uh, 410 thousandths of an inch when it comes out here. So you have the diameters right. Then you weigh the bullet, make sure it's 500 grain. And uh, if you have to take off anything from it, you probably would um, just... Um, you know, take a piece of sandpaper and go over the bottom real smooth. So that's how you want that bullet precision when you're shooting that kind of distance, okay? 
and so this is kind of a bullet sizer that's what that's doing right there okay that's another neat thing another thing too uh, looking at the barrel top right here when you have your powder in here and you put your bullet in here then uh, it'll slide down but this is a bullet starter now what happens is this thing uh, it's, it's got a relief cut in it right here and so you put this over the top of the barrel and it slides down over the top of the barrel so it's not going to fall off okay so it comes down to about right here and so you can take this right here it sticks a little bit you can take this right here and push your bullet down like that into your barrel okay then this comes off so your bullet started right there then you use a, a ramrod now notice this barrel does not come with a ramrod it's not made for that it's made for target shooting again long distance so i usually use a fiberglass ramrod and slide the bullet all the way down big thing is the top of this is flat and so putting these bullets in you got a flat top right here so you want to make sure that you have something flat to push on that bullet you do not want to deform the bullet so the bottom of this is flat okay so that's kind of how that looks you can see the maybe the inside that a little bit so that's pretty neat right there a bullet sizer that special bullet starter making sure you got the right grain of powder in here on your powder you can weigh that your powder and make sure you got exactly 70 grain instead of just kind of using a powder measure Sometimes you you want to measure with a micrometer like this the uh, diameter of your bullet make sure that that's consistent and then you want to weigh it and make sure in this case it's exactly 500 grains so that you can there's a lot more to it you can get into with uh, black powder shooting for long distance and precision shooting with black powder but uh, it's really interesting when you read stories of people who shoot thousand yards it actually hit the bullseye because that's uh, almost an impossible shot now I have been to thousand yard competitions as a spectator the closest thousand yard uh, range for me is only about 30 miles away and uh, it's a military base and uh, it's it's hard to find thousand yard ranges usually you won't find uh, there's one in Georgia there's one in Tennessee and maybe one in Alabama very hard to find uh, those kind of ranges to shoot uh, this kind of distance with 100 yard 300 500 800 900 thousand yards uh, but uh, to give you an idea of you might not think well how in the world is somebody going to use a peep sight like this and uh, and be accurate with it well I tell you uh, one of the competitions I was at as a spectator uh, there were like 15 shooters shooting at a thousand yards and over half a mile and that's what they had they had peep sights every one of them had peep sights except for one older guy who was about 70 years old he was a handicap he had a scope on his rifle and uh they call him handicapped because he's using the scope his eyes just couldn't see through the peep sights anymore but those guys some of those guys were hitting the bullseye at over half a mile with peep sights like this similar to this anyway and uh, that's really amazing because you got to be able to to dope the wind, you got to have a spotter, of course. You got to be able to dope the wind and know how much the wind's going to be pushing your shots off. Your spotter will help you with that, and how high to aim and all of that, and adjust your sights. And uh, you got heat coming from the ground. It's kind of like a these heat waves kind of make an undulation, uh, like a moving target, and that kind of throws you off a little bit too. So there's a lot that goes into that. If you're off. Uh, Fifteen thousandths of an inch, fifteen thousandths of an inch, 
on pulling the trigger at that distance, it's going to throw you way off on your target. You probably missed the target. So you have to shoot pretty precision, and that's, a, that's an art. That takes a lot of shooting to get that good. Well, guys, I hope this helps you a little bit on looking at uh, long-distance black powder shooting. And that can be a lot of fun and a great challenge to you. Uh, there are gunsmiths that do make competition guns today that are extraordinary in their ability to shoot long distance. Half of it's the gun, the other half is the shooter themselves. But there's a lot more can be said about this. Thanks for watching, guys. Gary J.